Back in 2022, CATL partnered with China-based bus maker Yutong to develop longer lasting lithium ion batteries. And now less than two years later, that partnership has resulted in an impressively long lasting lithium iron phosphate battery. Stick around as I discuss the details of this new LFP battery technology and the likelihood of it showing up in a Tesla vehicle in the future. I'm John and this is Clean Watt. With every charging cycle, lithium ion batteries lose a little bit of their capacity, which we refer to as degradation. For example, while a long range all wheel drive Tesla Model Y may be able to go around 310 miles on a single charge when new, according to data from Tessie, after 100,000 miles or so, you should expect that range to be around 10% lower, so somewhere around 280 miles of range. However, the rear wheel drive Tesla Model 3 and not the rear wheel drive Model Y sold in the USA, but the ones sold in other markets of the world, those vehicles have lithium iron phosphate batteries, which generally do have a lower rate of degradation over time versus their nickel based equivalents. However, even lithium iron phosphate batteries will lose a little bit of capacity over time. To illustrate this, here's a chart that I put together with data from Tessie showing the amount of average battery degradation for Tesla's vehicles. As you can see, the Model Y with a lithium iron phosphate battery pack after 45,000 miles has the lowest amount of expected degradation at around 2%. So in general, lithium iron phosphate batteries already last longer and suffer slower degradation than nickel based batteries but CATL has apparently figured out a way to make these long lasting batteries last even longer. And it's even claimed that these batteries have zero degradation after the first 1000 cycles. And yes, you heard that right. Zero degradation after 1000 charging cycles. The reason this is so significant is because if you were to take, for example, the rear wheel drive model three, that has an EPA rated range of 272 miles with the 18 inch wheels. If you charge that vehicle 1000 times, that means you should be able to drive that vehicle well over 200,000 miles up to 272,000 miles. That's a lot of driving. And if at that point you had 0% battery degradation, that would be extremely impressive, even for a lithium iron phosphate battery. So with that being said, I want to cover more details about this new CATL lithium iron phosphate battery technology. I came across this post on x.com that was shared by Battery Bulletin, and this post highlighted some of the details of this new LFP battery. For example, these batteries should have a 15 year life and should be able to power an EV up to 1.5 million kilometers, which equates to over 932,000 miles. In addition, once again, these batteries should also have 0% degradation after the first 1000 cycles. I don't know the exact chemistry or other cell changes that CATL is using to make these batteries last so long, but one of the key factors for limiting degradation and thus preserving more usable capacity comes down to the fact that CATL is using a pre-lithiation agent, which adds more lithium to the battery. Because when you first cycle a lithium ion battery, a portion of the available lithium in the battery is used to form the SEI layer. Thus, the battery ends up having less usable lithium during operation, which lowers the battery capacity. And over time, with operation, a battery loses the amount of available lithium, which makes the capacity lower and lower. And one way to combat this, especially for the initial capacity loss, is to add extra lithium to the battery with a pre-lithiation agent. So while this concept is not new, it looks like CATL has taken this to the next level and added quite a bit more lithium than maybe would be normal with a pre-lithiation agent. To visualize this, Battery Bulletin did share this particular graph and the purple section of the graph there shows the battery with the pre-lithiation agent. And you can see that after roughly 1000 cycles, it's projected that the battery at that point will reach around 100% capacity. Whereas that yellow line represents, I believe the same exact kind of battery. I assume it would be the same kind of chemistry except for not having the pre-lithiation agent. But you can see the yellow there shows the degradation after 1000 cycles drops below 95%. 
Notice above that chart that it's written purple with LFP pre-lithiation agent. Now LFO stands for lithium difluorophosphate and it's a somewhat common lithium salt electrolyte additive. However, it is important to note that this additive can be expensive and add extra cost to the battery. This is something that the limiting factor pointed out in this post when he wrote, quote, obviously adding sacrificial lithium to the battery cell may add some extra cost, but it would also increase utility and potentially energy density, definitely worth it for commercial applications. With that being said, I came across this research paper on the IOP Science website, and it looks like this was published in the Journal of the Electrochemical Society. And this research paper specifically noted, quote, LFO is also a relatively expensive additive, making it desirable to identify lower cost alternatives. Now, unfortunately, I don't know how much adding LFO to the battery electrolyte adds to the battery cost. But nonetheless, if it does add a decent amount more cost, once again, this would make more sense for commercial applications where extremely long life is important, say for like trucks, heavy machinery, etc. Now, while CATL is a major Tesla battery supplier, because this adds extra cost, I don't expect that this kind of battery technology will make its way into the Model 3 or the Model Y at any point in the near future. Maybe if the cost comes down, but for now, Tesla is optimizing for low cost with long enough battery life. And the LFP batteries in Tesla's vehicles right now have plenty enough life for their intended purpose. So with that being said, when it comes to the kind of vehicles that these new CATL batteries will be used in, since CATL partnered with a bus maker, Utong, as was pointed out in the CNEV post article, these batteries will be used in future vehicles made by Utong Bus and Utong Heavy Industries. And it looks like these vehicles will include buses, light trucks, and heavy trucks. So once again, in commercial applications where price is not as important as long life. When a company is designing a battery, they usually optimize that battery cell for the end use case. For example, you can optimize a battery for low cost, long life, high power, or high energy density, but you can't have a battery with all of these characteristics, at least right now with current technology. For example, if you have a battery with higher energy density or higher power density, this usually equals a more expensive and shorter lasting battery. However, if you're optimizing a battery for longer life, this often means lower energy density, for example. So just reading between the lines here, I believe this new CATL battery technology that lasts so long very likely has a lower energy and power density than a normal LFP battery. And I think it's very possible that this battery is cycled to a lower max voltage to really limit the amount of degradation in that battery cell in addition to adding that extra lithium with the LFO additive. And one of the reasons why I believe this is the case is because this CNEV post article also mentions that Utong introduced what they call a power battery which still lasts a long time, 10 years or 1 million kilometers, but that is less than the 15 years and 1.5 million kilometers of the other battery technology that is apparently optimized for long life. So once again, this specific battery technology is probably more expensive and is optimized for very specific commercial applications. And I don't expect that battery technology to be used, for example, in the Model 3 or the Model Y. Once again, the Model 3 and the Model Y that have LFP battery packs, those batteries already last a long time and have great performance. There's really no need to increase the lifetime of those batteries. They last plenty long enough for a typical passenger vehicle and there's no need to add extra unnecessary cost to those vehicles with this technology. However, when it comes to a Tesla RoboTaxi or for example, an LFP equipped Tesla Semi, which I do expect in the future, that's where this battery technology would make a lot of sense, where cost is less important than long lasting batteries. However, there is a unique use case for using a similar battery technology to this in a passenger vehicle, even if the cost is higher, because according to this CNEV Post article, um, CATL is partnering with NEO to develop longer lasting batteries that they will use in their battery swapping. And this is of course another use case where cost is less important 
than battery longevity because if your battery can last two to three times as long, an extra 20% added cost to that battery pack doesn't really matter very much because it all washes out in the end and you actually come out ahead if that battery pack lasts a long time. So once again, this exact technique and this exact technology makes sense, I believe, for commercial applications, but um, not so much for your typical passenger vehicles, unless of course, you're doing something like with Neo, where they're doing battery swapping. I would love to know what you think about this battery technology in the comments section below. So feel free to leave comments with your thoughts about this technology. I'd also like to say once again, thank you to all of those of you who support me through Patreon. Your support makes a big difference and does help make these videos possible. If you'd like to find out more about how you can support my work through Patreon, I will put a link in the video description. Thank you so much.